Americans have rushed to rescue Ukrainian orphans. One mission led to a child trafficking probe. When Russian bombs started dropping on Ukraine in late February a country singer half a world away in Nashville says he felt the panic of a parent whose child is in danger. The nine-year-old boy who Scooter Brown and his wife Vicky had started the process of adopting was among those hiding in the basement of an orphanage in central Ukraine as three Russian missiles soared overhead and slammed into a Ukrainian military base about 60 miles away. After that episode the Browns took matters into their own hands. Brown a burly and bearded former Marine who fought on the front lines of Iraq in 2003 and whose namesake band has produced songs with titles such as Guitars, Guns and Whiskey and Wine Drunk convinced a special forces buddy to join him overseas. They worked with a small Nashville organization run by another military veteran in an attempt to rescue the Browns' future adoptee and a handful of other kids. Brown's wife arrived later to provide additional support. But the mission ended in disaster and confusion. Not only did the Browns return to Tennessee without the children their rescue attempt led to an international child trafficking investigation that the couple said is baseless. Ever since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, an adoption hotspot for U.S. families, a litany of stories about often well-intentioned Americans seeking to rescue Ukrainian orphans and whisk them to safety have cropped up. But experts on adoption non-profit workers and child safety advocates told CNN they worry about how these kinds of stories will end. A number of such missions have been detailed even celebrated in news reports. A pastor and a group of churchgoers reportedly flew to Poland with the hope of temporarily bringing children back to Missouri. Two Pennsylvania men, a businessman and a Catholic priest, went to Ukraine where they would shuttle 22 Ukrainian orphans over the border into neighboring Lithuania with the original plan now on hold of taking some of them to temporary safe harbor in Pittsburgh. A 55-year-old mom traveled to Ukraine, at one point hunkering down in Ulva area mall during a rocket attack that rattled the building, to be near the teenager she intends to adopt and bring back to Kentucky, and a former Washington state lawmaker with far-right ties who was involved in a dramatic rescue of more than 60 kids from an orphanage in ravaged Mariupol later became the focus of scrutiny after the children wound up in Poland, and he buddied heads with a Polish volunteer who questioned his motives. Now a Polish prosecutor may launch an investigation into the matter. It's what I call the ramble reaction which is to go in and get them out, said Nigel Cantwell, a child protection policy consultant in Switzerland who often works with UNICEF, and that is to me an enormous concern in child protection. Refugees from Ukraine line up to get on buses to other destinations in Poland outside the train station in Przemyśl near the Ukrainian-Polish border in southeastern Poland on March 16, 2022. Americans who take extreme measures to get orphans out of harm's way and into the United States say many of these kids lack parental advocates and are eager to join a family in a stable setting even if just temporarily. We just want the kids to be here with us in a home and a family surrounded by people that they know and love set upstate New York resident Melissa Nowitzki who had hosted and is now trying to adopt an 11-year-old boy who was among the more than 60 orphans the Washington state lawmaker Matt Shea helped evacuate in March. Shea, a pastor who is trying to adopt four of the kids himself, did not return emails or calls from CNN seeking comment, but on a right-wing Christian podcast he blasted local newspaper reports about the matter as fake news even though he did not reply to their requests for comment and accused the reporters of bias. In any case independent missions to move orphans out of the country could set a precedent that makes it easier for other kids to become unaccounted for and ultimately exploited or even trafficked experts warn.
Numbers are in short supply but reports are already coming in of children going missing after they cross the border said a spokesperson with Save the Children a humanitarian organization that assists kids during conflicts and other emergencies. Some groups heading into the danger zone don't have proven track records of being able to care for children or operate in combat areas experts say. What's more most kids living in Ukrainian orphanages have parents or family who are still their legal guardians according to the U.S. Department of State so sending anyone abroad in haste during times of turmoil runs the risk of separating kids from their immediate or extended families. The State Department added that the Ukrainian government does not approve of Ukrainian children traveling to the U.S. for temporary travel at this time. The dust has got to settle said Mark Davis who runs a non-profit called Abundance International that works with many of the orphanages in Ukraine. You can't just grab a child and take them home. Davis said someone tried to convince him to just put the orphans on a bus and get them across the border without a plan of where they would stay or access medical care while two other men he had never met asked him for $100,000 to take orphans to another part of the country. Adam Pert Mann, president of a policy group called the National Center on Adoption and Permanency said the frenzy to save kids in Ukraine follows a pattern. During almost every conflict or natural disaster abroad U.S. adoption agencies are flooded with calls by Americans who want to adopt but are uninformed about the procedures in place to protect the kids. The best practice is to keep the kid as close to home as possible, he said. In the middle of a war like this you can't know whether one of the parents is alive, whether there's a grandparent, an aunt or cousin. You do a due diligence search for the people who already know the child. The notion that attempts are being made during the current conflict to bring Ukrainian kids who still have parents to the United States isn't a hypothetical said Teresa Filmon executive director of a Ukrainian charity that works with orphans called his kids too. She said she knows a Ukrainian mother who temporarily dropped off three of her four children at a facility because the mother felt overwhelmed. Filmon, who splits her time between Ukraine and Florida where she is currently located, spent several days trying to reach the mother to let her know that a hosting organization had been searching for the three kids to send them to families in the United States. Filmon declined to name the organization, but the mother's home is just a few miles from the front lines and cell phone coverage, along with electricity and running water, has been non-existent for weeks. Filmon whose charity has operated in Ukraine since 1998 said she hasn't been able to track down the kids or the mother, and added that she plans to travel to Ukraine herself to see what is going on. She's illiterate. She doesn't read film said of the mother, but that doesn't make it that your children get taken away from you. In mid-March the beleaguered Ukrainian government, struggling to survive let alone keep track of thousands of displaced orphans, issued a moratorium on inter-country adoption citing a concern that wartime brings with it the threat of exploitation or child trafficking. 100,000 orphans for decades Russia was an adoption hotspot for Americans, but in late 2012 Russian President Vladimir Putin, partially in response to a human rights law targeting Russians accused of human rights violations signed by then-President Barack Obama, banned Russian adoptions by U.S. citizens. Since then although the number of inter-country adoptions by Americans has been steadily plummeting for nearly 20 years, including from Ukraine. Ukraine has essentially replaced Russia as one of the top countries from which Americans adopt.
Meanwhile, Ukraine is not among the 100 fur nations that are beholden to the 1993 Hague Adoption Convention established by the Hague Conference on Private International Law. This means there is no guarantee the adoption has been done following the safeguards and procedures established by this international treaty such as verifying the adoptability of the child and eligibility of the adoptive parents a Hague official told CNN in an email. Thus there is no guarantee that the inter-country adoption took place in the best interests of the child, and with respect for his or her fundamental rights the official said, at first blush it would appear Ukraine has a large pool of adoptable children. Its population of kids living in orphanages and other childcare facilities, at 100,000, was the highest in Europe before the war a UNICEF spokesperson told CNN adding that it amounts to 1,3% of all kids in the country, but as experts noted most are not orphans in the literal sense in that they have family connections or legal guardians. Many live in orphanages to receive specialized care for medical disabilities or other needs that couldn't be met by their families. It's not like oh they just dump them there said Phil Munn, they love their children, they just can't take care of them at that given moment, and that's no reason why some American can swoop in here and snag them. I have no one, but some adoptive parents say there are Ukrainian orphans who have been abandoned by their family for years and are desperate to be adopted. Colleen Thompson and her husband David of Kentucky have been jumping through bureaucratic hoops to adopt a teenage girl named Mawira for three years. In early March the adoption was close to being finalized but was put on hold due to the war. Mawira and other children had taken refuge in a dingy basement of a Donetsk orphanage to protect themselves from the carnage outside. Thompson, 55, decided to go to Ukraine to wrap up the process so she could bring Mawira home to a family with two biological children and six adoptees all from Ukraine.